YouTube, what's going on? My name's Braden. I just want to thank everyone for stopping by and uh, taking the time out to watch my second training vlog on my new channel. So today we're going to talk about a few things. First off, the footage you're going to be seeing is my week one cycle four squat day on 531. So we'll get into that a bit later. First topic I want to go over today is optimal training time. So I want to know if other people have a certain time where they really have peak performance, I guess you could say. This footage that we're going to be seeing now, it was recorded at about 9.30 at night. And for that, personally, that's really late for me, training time. I had to make my squats fit in some point, so that's the only time they could fit in. Usually I train at about lunchtime, so that's a whole, say, nine hours difference where I've done a lot more stuff during the day. And I really felt like I wasn't switched on for this, this full leg day session. And you'll probably, be, you'll probably notice that throughout my sets of squats, it just wasn't feeling right, I wasn't getting the right depth that I wanted. Um, everything was just a little bit off and I have a feeling that's probably why due to the fact that it was so late compared to my normal training times. So even now on this set of warm up squats, obviously I have butt wink. Um, it's, a lot, it's a problem that a lot of people have and I'm working on getting rid of mine so I'm thinking after my next month on 531 I'm going to take a bit of a bit of a break on heavier squats I guess you could say. I'm going to try and do some lighter squats, really try and focus on building up my form, working on my depth and getting everything correct again. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was off days, so not rest days but just off days in the gym. What do you guys like to do when you feel like you go in there and you just can't hit the numbers that you wanted to hit or that you had to hit on your program? So as you'll be able to see in the next set I believe, I had to hit 5 reps for the second set and the third set and I hit 4 and then 3 reps so that really sort of threw me off for the rest of the session in the gym. I tried to push through it, I didn't want to just stop it there and then just you know, not completing the rest of the work, all my accessory movements and stuff like that. So, usually on my off days, like I said, I just try and not let it get to me. I try and just continue on, just try and hit the same weight and the same reps that I usually do. Um, some days you can just do that, you can just push through, but other days, like today, it was, uh, it was definitely one of those days where it really got to me mentally not being able to hit those squats. But um, those things happen in the gym and you just got to try, as I said, push it aside, be stronger and just uh, stick to what you have to do. You see here, this was in between my second and third set. I knew that I was going to struggle on this last set, considering I already did on the second set. I only got four reps when I had to get five, so in this one, I wanted to at least get three, try and hit four, because I knew I wasn't going to get five by this point. Um, also, I had to, whenever I get to about 120, about 121, 123 kilos, I have to have that pad thing on the, on the bar. It always just really digs into my... I don't know, into my traps and my shoulders, I guess, and really just becomes uncomfortable when unracking. So that's something I'm trying to get rid of. Um, I used to have that problem at about 100 kilos, but now it only happens when I'm at about 120. So it's something I'm working on getting rid of, so don't worry about that. Um, what do we got next? The next clip we got here, this is about my third or my second set, I think, of, of um, leg press. Yeah, I think it's my third. So I stuck with this weight through most of the reps, and as you're about to see, got my friend Scott, who's actually starting his own channel as well. Um, he's there to help me, because this is a drop set. Um, this one really just absolutely fried my quads. Um, so shouts out to Scott for helping me unrack. You also see him at the end of the, at the, end of the video. There's a nice little clip of him. But um, yeah, this one really destroyed my legs. It was, it was really good. Um, I have one last thing to go over for the video, and that is, I had a question from a friend and he asks why I don't use a belt, any chalk, or proper squat shoes or anything yet, even though he knows I want to buy them. For me personally, I don't feel like I'm at that point yet where I need uh, weightlifting shoes, so proper Olympic lifting shoes. I feel like I should work on my depth and my form before I actually go buying that, because that's just going to mask the problems that I have, I guess, with my depth. It's going to get me that extra depth, but... I'm still going to have those problems in the long run. So Olympic lifting shoes, once I fix my squat depth and everything like that, then for sure I'll definitely go buy some. Um, with a belt, I don't feel like I need it just yet as well. I feel like I'm getting close to wanting one and needing one, but 
I haven't bought one yet, and plus it costs it, it costs a lot of money to get the Inza Forever Lover Belt or whatever it's called sent over to Australia. So I don't really want to go spending that much money and like giving away my firstborn child just to have a weightlifting belt. So that can wait a fair bit of time before I need that. And chalk, um, you know, I can find substitutes for that. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Shouts out to Scott here. Um, leave a comment, leave a like, and a subscribe. One last thing guys, my Instagram and my Twitter are both in the description box below, so make sure you go check them out and you chuck us a follow on there. Peace.